Welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. If you like what we do and want to tip us, you can now do so directly to our PayPal. Check out the link in the description to this episode for more details. And as always, you can subscribe to our Patreon, where we share stories of life in Ukraine in times of war. Our latest episode is the story of a local resident who saw the start of the war in Donbass. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 243 days, Ukraine stands strong against the Russian invasion. Yesterday, Ukraine marked eight months since the start of the full-scale Russian invasion. In his evening video address, President Volodymyr Zelensky stressed that in these months Ukrainians have defended the independence of their state and Russia cannot change that already. They are liberating the Ukrainian land step by step. The president pointed out that Ukraine is breaking the so-called second army of the world and from now on Russia will only be a beggar. They are begging for something in Iran. They are trying to squeeze something out of Western countries, making up various nonsense about Ukraine, intimidating, deceiving, stressed the president. Never again will Russia be a subject that can dictate something to someone. It no longer has the potential to dictate, said Zelensky. At the same time, he reminded that Ukrainians have no time to relax as there is still a long way to Ukrainian victory. First of all, Ukraine has to pass this winter, which will be the most difficult in Ukraine's history. The International Atomic Energy Agency plans to send its mission to Ukraine to visit two nuclear facilities amid Russia's accusations of a dirty bomb attack preparations, reports European Pravda. The agency reminded that it conducted an inspection of one of these facilities a month ago and all the safety protocols were upheld there. No undeclared nuclear activity or materials were found. The organization agreed to conduct another check at Ukraine's request. Earlier it became known that the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Dmitry Kuleba, officially invited the International Atomic Energy Agency to send the mission to Ukraine, all to refute Moscow's fabrications about the alleged development of a dirty bomb. Defense Minister of Ukraine Oleksiy Reznikov spoke with U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin yesterday, reports Ukraine Forum. Reznikov welcomed the clear position of the U.S. regarding non-reaction to provocations and zero tolerance for blackmail. He announced the next U.S. package of military assistance to Ukraine, but provided no further details. The Ukrainian court arrested President of the Motor Siege Corporation Vyacheslav Bohuslayev for 60 days, reports Interfax Ukraine. Motorsich is one of the Europe's largest aircraft engine manufacturing enterprises. Bohuslav is suspected of aiding the aggressor state and collaboration. According to the investigators, Bohuslav regularly discussed and realized the supply of engines and other spare parts to Russian attack helicopters, even after the start of the full-scale invasion. After his detention, the media informed that Bohuslav has a Russian passport and later it was confirmed by his attorney. Investigators from the insider Bellingcat and Der Spiegel found a secret unit within the main computer center of the Russian armed forces and identified 30 military engineers directing missiles at targets in Ukraine, including civilian targets, reports Ukrainska Pravda. Most of these people, according to the joint investigation, are young men and women with backgrounds in information technology and even computer game development. All of them are registered as living and working in Moscow at the official address of the General Staff of the Russian Armed Forces. The General Staff informed that Ukrainian forces pushed the Russians out of three settlements in Lugansk and one settlement in Donetsk regions, reports Unyan. In addition, air defense units shot down two Russian helicopters. In order to slow down the counteroffensive of the armed forces of Ukraine, the invaders keep placing mines on bridges and crossings on their retreat routes in Mykolaiv and Kherson regions. The Russian Red Cross announced collection of aid to the mobilized Russian soldiers, reports Espresso. The organization claims that the Russian military who participate in the war in Ukraine face a number of difficulties and their families feel anxious and need financial and humanitarian assistance. The Red Cross of Ukraine called on partners from the International Red Cross Movement to impose tough measures against the Russian organization to prevent such activities. They point out that the Russian Red Cross violates the principle of neutrality by starting to support the political campaign initiated by Moscow, which provides assistance to military personnel. The same position is supported by the Ukrainian Commissioner on Human Rights. 
According to the survey conducted by the Kyiv International Institute of Sociology, 86% of Ukrainians believe that the armed resistance against Russian aggression should continue even if Russia keeps bombarding Ukrainian cities, reports Radio Liberty. Only 10% of respondents answered that it was necessary to move to negotiations in order to stop the bombardment as soon as possible, even if concessions had to be made to Russia. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine. 